All right, Kyle, we've been up to my man. Uh, I've been busy. I got a couple weeks of what it seemed like, you know, a little bit of a calm time, but you know, it didn't last too long. So got a lot of work in out at uh, Indy Motorsports Ranch. I've been basically living at the track and hanging out and working on my trailer and and the boy's been working hard on the bike and everything and ready to go now. What about your, uh, you had surgery this off season. So are you ready to go? You all healed up? I'm well, well ready now. I mean, honestly, it was going to be a little bit of a rush job to be fit for the season to start just because I had surgery and it was uh, spine surgery. I had a full artificial disc done in my neck. So that was November 6th and it's about three, four months recovery. So I was, I was under the gun to get ready for the original start of the season. But now that I've had an extra couple months, I feel completely normal. So it, it's, it's like it didn't even happen at this point. So the extra time actually kind of helped you out. Big time. Yeah, actually. No, it's, it's been good because I was stressing over it a little bit. Like I didn't get to ride anything from November 6th till my birthday, February 20th. So I only got to ride like twice before barber test and, uh, you know, getting a little arm pump and stuff. So it's good to get back on, you know, riding almost every day, you know, the last couple of months and feel ready to go now. Have you been riding, uh, you've been riding at Indy a lot lately or, uh, you know, to get ready for the season? Yeah, they stayed open the whole time. So I was out there basically living in the new race trailer and, you know, it's kind of a private member's facility. So we get to go out there and utilize the facility. They, you know, they, they kept everything pretty much open. So, you know, not a lot, it's starting to get busy now. It's really, now it's been like their busiest time out there the last few weeks because people are off work and they can go to the track. <laughs> but <laughs> for, for about six weeks, it was like, I was basically living at a racetrack that was like deserted. I could go on and off the track as I pleased. And I mean, I, I feel like I've probably ridden the most of anybody throughout quarantine at this point because I had, you know, cause of the Indy right there in my backyard. So it worked out pretty good. How did, uh, I've always, not a lot of people know this, but how did you get start, get started in racing? I mean, you come from, flat track and it's kind of a family affair just like uh you know me and my brothers yeah you know uh, i was watching the highlights from the tt this morning back at springfield i remember i was i was like 12 years old i think when that happened and uh you know th watching three brothers on the podium at springfield was like the coolest thing ever you know me and uh me and my brothers you know travis and cody we, you know, watching you guys go through dirt track into road racing, we kind of, you know, felt like we had this similar, you know, type of feel in our family with three brothers coming through. And, and um, you know, that's, that's something that uh, we've always looked up to you guys, you know. So we, uh, yeah, came through flat track, uh, racing out of upstate New York, but always going to like Ohio tracks and Canada. So we were, we were cushioned cushion half mile specialists, <laughs> you know, and, uh, I did three years of AMA flat track before I ever touched a road race bike. So, uh, 2006, seven and eight, I was, I was flat tracking and then, uh, didn't ever do, uh, anything road racing until the end of 2008. So yeah. how old were you then? I was 18 before I so ever you didn't start road racing until you were 18. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit weird start, you know, like, you guys were probably doing both all the way up, you know, growing up, right? Yeah, we was doing both. Uh, especially when we got older, we really started doing, uh, you know, both. Like 12, 10 years old, I mean, riding YSR 50s, RS 125s and stuff like that. Yeah, so I've never ridden a two-stroke road race bike. Really? Ever. You got to one of these schools. You're going to get on one. I'm Some, sure somebody will have one at a champ school. Yeah, yeah. So no, it's and honestly, like road racing was never in like the grand master plan. It never was. Like we were, we were just flat trackers. Like my grandfather took my mom to you know all the grand nationals back when she was a kid, and she would watch you know Freddie Nicks and you know 
Oh, oh yeah. You know, like that's why my number's 33 actually is because Freddie Nix was number three and my mom loved him so much. And so I was, we were all number three growing up through amateur flat track. Then I turned pro. I couldn't be single digit numbers. So went 33 B for New York and, uh, twice missed my national number by one spot. And, uh, so never got my national number before I switched out, but the only reason we went road racing is because my middle brother, Travis, tried out for Rookies Cup end of 2007, and he made it, like, just, just on a whim, you know? I think it was, you know, Danny Walker was a part of that, so he said, we, you know, he should try out. I was already too old to try out for <laughs> Rookies Cup, right? So, yeah, I definitely got a late start into road racing, you know? Um, I want to say, yeah, it was like... I wore my flat track, my Harv's Harley Davidson flat track leathers in my first Weera club race with the green provisional novice t-shirt over it. And that was like 12 years ago. So, you know, it's actually, I, I guess in context, like it hasn't been that long. No, not at all. Especially to be, you know, already a couple years in Superbike. So, you know, Josh Hayes, he started pretty late too. So, you yeah. know, it'll work out. So there's hope. I think a lot of a lot of people always, uh, yeah. There's definitely hope. Wonder why you uh, you chose Ducati because really it's a little bit. I mean, not only is it a brand new bike, but you're the only person there with the Ducati. So you know when you have a, a Yamaha or Suzuki, you can go ask other people questions or you know get help, but. You know, I mean, this year you'll have PJ there, but still, why, why Ducati? Gosh, I mean, I, I knew I wanted to make a change at the end of 2018 because just being another Yamaha on the grid, just it wasn't really, it wasn't fulfilling, you know. I wanted to kind of do something different, and for a while it was going to be a BMW, then it was going to be a Cowie. Like, it was very much going to be a Cowie up until, like, the middle of January last year. And uh, something fell through on that. So, I had ridden a stock V4 out of Indy back in December just for fun, just because a dealer had one. And, you know, I remember looking that night, you know, at the V4R that was coming out and, like, ah, there's no way, you know, there's no way that'll happen, you know. And, um Honestly, I think I made the decision like February 1st that I was going to ride, you know, the Ducatis. Wayne, uh, Wayne Rainey put in a call over to Italy and Paolo and, and Jason Chinook here to, to say, hey, if we, you know, if we got a rider who wants to race Ducatis and wants to purchase two bikes through a dealership, can we just find a way to get them here sooner? So the air freight, they, I, it cost me <laughs> the air freedom, but it, you know, I got the first two V4Rs in the country in the U S and they showed up, uh, March 1st. So I, but to answer your question, why Ducati? Because it's the, the most iconic brand, you know, out there. And like the connection is so, is so genuine to their fans. You know, if, if 10 people walk out of a dealership with a new Yamaha, R1 or R6, you know, how many of them avidly watch racing on the weekends, MotoGP or anything, you know, maybe one, right? But 10 people who walk out of a Ducati dealership with a brand new V4, how many of them watch racing? You know, yeah, probably all of them, if not, you know, eight or nine out of 10, you know, so like the connection's so good and, and so authentic there that I, that I knew it was going to draw a lot of interest especially if we could do it well which in my opinion last year i wouldn't say we did it well but i mean we were the only team in the world racing the ducati v4r without just buying kit bikes from corsa so we built it from you know from a stock bike up to a superbike rather than you know like the bsb teams or other world superbike team just being like hey give me the rs kit bike yeah, ready to race. So, we've taken the scenic route. What'd you think the first time you rode it? Because I rode one a Ducati for the first time last year at um, you know Ducati Ride Day, and uh, 
I loved it. I mean, it was totally yeah. different though, and it took, you know, just the noise of it was so different from what I ever like the slipper clutch and stuff. Just, you know, it was so different. But man, I wrote it. I loved it. I couldn't believe how fast it was, how small it was. What'd you think? Uh, no, yeah, because it's narrow, right? Because it's a V four. The thing's got crazy horsepower. I mean, I I was like. It just feels so like there's a, just a different feeling with Ducati. They talk about it, but there really is something there that you can't really put your finger on. But I mean, the 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 thing about it is like that bike is so good out of the box. Like literally, I I go out and ride. I've, we've got a base model V4 that one of my sponsors bought, and I ride the thing. And like out of Indy, I have the lap records like a 145.6. I can do 47 nines on a stock bike. Like the amount of money I've spent on my super bike, <laughs> you know, and I can get like almost within two seconds on a, on a completely bone stock one with, with slicks. It's pretty wild how good it is, but it's amazing how much it takes to get just that little extra bit. But we're getting close. That's always the hardest part is to find yeah. the, the extra few, few tents. Do you get any help from, I know last year, didn't you get a motor from, uh, Ducati course and what about this year Are you getting any support from uh, the guys in Italy yeah so last year we bought a uh, like a super stock super bike hybrid motor from the Barney team so Ducati course when you actually go through them for you know for engine programs on the V4s at least you actually the Barney team is like their their service provider for that for other teams so um, this year I bought a full world super bike level and uh, it's a big step we just I just rode it for the first time yesterday, and I'm not mad that the first two rounds are at Road America. <laughs> Let that's that fast, be. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think we're going to have some, some serious horsepower this year, but more than anything, just having a year under our belt, and uh, you know, my crew chief is your former electronics guy, yep. Marshall, which you, know, I, you guys worked really well together. He has helped transform my program, just given me peace of mind to be able to focus a lot more on the riding yeah he's a good guy not only you know he takes the job home with him too you know he always i mean he just always i remember get emails from him on like saturday night at like nine o'clock hey we think about this and which was cool because as a racer you're always thinking about racing too yeah no he's got a full-time job up in canada but you know he's he lives this stuff and he's he's having a blast working on the you know, working on this little project that we call KWR, you know, it's, uh, it's been really cool. And I've got, uh, Evan Steele working for me this year, as well as, uh, Dave Hopkinson, who I just dropped off at the airport. He was out here for a week. He, uh, he won the championship with Leon Haslam and BSB two years ago. So I've got a really good, right. good, good guys, really, really pumped on, uh, the crew. The bike is dialed, ready to go. And, I feel better after spine surgery that was bugging me all last year. It seems like everything is kind of falling into place. How hard is it to be team owner, team manager, you know, rider? I mean, is there enough, not only, I mean, you do everything. Don't you order the parts and, you know, I mean, how hard is that? It's, it's insanely time consuming which is why we moved our call up today because I got to get back out to the track and fix, finish prepping the semi. Um, like, yeah, I mean, in a couple out right after this call, I'm going to bust out press release for previewing Road America, write that up. So you'll, whoever, you know, watches, you know, Road Racing World or whatever, you'll see that. Everything that, that happens, I have to, um, I have to compartmentalize it mostly. I have to, especially in these last few weeks of, but you know, before the season starts is the hardest time of the whole year to just basically put my riding, you know, the athlete part in a box. Cause I can't like, I, I, I haven't thought about what turn one at road America feels like in a couple of weeks. Cause I'm just trying to get to the track. Right. But that's all yeah. you out as a rider you know it's just like trying to get you know just feel that and understand it and you know visualize things i have to trust that that part of it that i set aside to, to make sure this rig at least gets to the track 
is going to be there Saturday afternoon, you know, and that I've done the preparation. So, um, I've tried, I, I used to think of it as like flipping a switch, but really it's just like, you know, I just got to identify that's who I am. That's the path I've chosen. And, um, you know, I might have six or seven years ago, I might have said, oh, you know, this is as good as I can do being a team owner. I don't have that. I don't have this. But, you know, the last couple of years, it's like, you know what? What if I can do all this and still whoop their ass anyway? That's kind of where I'm at. That's what I'm. That's yeah. what I'm so. I mean, that's that's the mentality you have to have. If not, yeah. I mean, you're just wasting your time. How close is your bike to like the World Super Bike guys? Is it pretty close? It's totally. It's a total. It left turn from most most of it. Like we've got a very early version, like factory swing arm on the bike, but it's. Like literally the date code is before the V4 was ever announced as a model. You know, it's pretty early. That's yeah. from uh, the Ducati North America. Um, we went to the Corsa triple clamps. So now we have like at least like from a chassis, we have pretty much like a base as far as like a front end and a swing arm and kind of rear end. We kind of have a close comparison of those guys. And now we've got, I mean, I mean, assuming that Barney's, world superbike spec motor is pretty close to you know what the uh what the corsa guys are we've got pretty much there and and then having marshall and his experience with the electronics uh they've given us pretty much all capabilities in the ecu so we have everything as far as like the essential core tools i think we just we don't have the latest stuff you know, we have like stuff that Corsa was testing in the background, basically like end of 17 and 2018. It's kind of where the spec we're at. If, if you had to put your finger on it. I was talking to somebody the other day. And we we're talking about road America and who's, uh, you know, we're thinking about that could be a breakout weekend for you because everybody this year, it's kind of on a level playing field. Everybody switched teams. Everybody's got a new crew. The Ducati's really fast. So, you know, Road America should be should be a killer weekend for you. But I guess my question is, like, is this year, is this the year that we're going to have, you know, Kyle Wyman's breakout season? You know, every other year, you know, some weekends are fast and you're up there, some weekends not. You know, is, is this going to be the year you think that now that you have a second year, won the Ducati, same team, all the other guys have moved teams. Can we can we expect a Kyle Wyman breakout year? If I, if I was cooking anything up, that's what I'd be cooking, <laughs> if, if I could put it that way. I think uh, I'm starting to feel like all the pieces are falling into place. Um, I feel like, and, and not only Road America being, you know, thinking it's going to be a strong track for the Ducati, it's my favorite track on the schedule, and we get to go there twice. I'm like, all right, let's go. Like, no better way to set the tone on the year. You know, you can, you can, you can bet that, you know, next Friday morning, I'm going to be rolling out of the pits first guy out because I'm, I'm hungry. Yeah. I, I can't wait to get going. I feel like we do have potential for it to be one of those years good i hope it is what about when you're done racing with your team or is this something that you want to continue when you get done racing or once you're done you're over it because all the work it takes i don't know i feel like i sometimes i feel you know and, and actually like especially towards the end of last year because i had the spine problems with the nerves and all the pain and everything the second half of the year and like, I was, I was pretty much done in a lot of ways, like not in the way that I would, you know, ever considered like walking away or anything, but like, I was like, really, is it, is it, does it have to be this hard forever, you know, type of feeling. And that's even while we were getting our best results of the season towards the end of the year. And, um, it's hard. This is like literally the biggest, the busiest time of the year. So it's difficult to think of it in the terms but um 
I, I, I would see myself when I'm done riding, I got to walk away for a little while. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to transition to team owner and hire a rider the next year. You know, I got to, I got to walk away for a little bit, but I'm not, not ready for that yet. You know, yeah. I, uh, I did turn 30 in February, so I'm no longer one of the young up and comer. No, nope, not at all. But, uh, but I did get a late start, so I feel like my best days are definitely ahead of me, for sure. Well, we know that you got to get going, but uh, we got a couple uh, questions from some fans. So, uh, Moto Cairo asked, have you started putting wings on other things in your life, like lamps, 18-wheelers, <laughs> and cell phones? You know, if they if they weren't so expensive, I'd have them on my dually and have them on the semi and everything, because uh, they help me on the racetrack. <laughs> but yeah, no, I that's that's funny though. I should I should make we should get some winglet keychains or something that we can hand out at the track. Yeah, uh, Miss Death asked. We all have our favorite turn. Which track and which turn is your favorite? Always jumps out to me is turn 11 at Road Atlanta. It's not really a turn, but there's something about being bent in at 180 or whatever it is. Don't look left. Yeah, don't look left. <laughs> Flat out. Might as well close your eyes as you come over the crest down into, or it's turn nine, I guess, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but I don't know what you're talking about. Nine going, you know, through the kink, six gear flat out. That's what I think of. I guess mine would be. Uh, well, I mean, there's a couple, but I love Salt Lake City turn uh, turn four, three and four the kink yeah. where you just, you know, when everything's working good, you can keep it flat out. I, I don't wow. know. I just there's no better feeling than going through someone's super bike wide open. I think we both picked a similar situation there. <laughs> uh, El Elijah No asked if you've tested at the Ridge, and if so, what did you think about it? I haven't tested there, but I went there with Champ School last year, and I think we're teaching there in a few weeks, uh, middle June. I think it's still on. So uh, it's a really cool place. It's going to be busy on a superbike. It's going to be a lot of work to get around there. Like, it's going to be one of the more physical tracks, but it's smooth, it's fast, it's new, and I think, like, the area has been wanting some racing for a long time. I think it's going to be a really good event. All right, last one. Joe Welch asks, what other hobbies do you have outside of racing? doesn't sound like you have time for any other hobbies, but <laughs> what are they if there is any? I, I love golf, but, like, I don't think I've played since November, right before I went into surgery. I was like, if I can't golf when I get out of surgery because it's not going to be right or it's going to hurt me, I'm going to golf before. So I golfed, you know, I suffered through the pain and like put my put my body through golf. But I don't know. I, hobbies, like, I just want to win. That's all I care about. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, my man. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. And uh, I think we all want to see you do good next week. Everybody, you know, respects you for, you know, all the – it'd be easy to walk away with all the work that you have to do. And, you know, so much respect and uh, hope it all goes well. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for chatting with me. All right. See you. All right, man. Later.